Today, I'm going to show you how to make something like this, a 3D title using Adobe Illustrator, Cinema 4D, Unreal Engine, and Adobe After Effects. Let's get into it. What's up, YouTube? My name is John Jagsney, and I'm very excited to be sharing with you my full process on how I make 3D titles. The one we're going to be covering today is based on a Kickstarter project I worked on with a friend of mine. His name is Senjin. And if you're watching this video in August of 2022, I highly recommend going to check out his Kickstarter on the Blood Rune game. It's a very fun tabletop RPG. You can learn all about it in the description down below. And of course on their Kickstarter. Anyways, let's dive into Adobe Illustrator and we can start with the process of making a 3D title for a video. So we're in Adobe Illustrator and generally speaking, whenever you work with a client, they should provide you some sort of vector format of the logo. What we're looking for is the path information of the logo so then we can extrude it in our 3D software of choice. Now the 3D software that I like to use is Cinema 4D. However, you could use Blender, you could use Maya, whatever else. We're going to find those paths in the Adobe Illustrator project. We'll click on the far right side so we can select the entire group of all of that text. We'll hit Control C, go to File, New, doesn't matter the dimensions because we're just going to bring it into Cinema 4D, and Control V into this new project. From here, we're going to save it, and I'm just going to save it on my computer. We'll call this Blood Rune Logo Tutorial. Cool. We're going to keep all of these settings the same. Fortunately, Cinema 4D 2022 allows you to bring in modern Adobe Illustrator files. Now, if you're like me and you're not super familiar with Adobe Illustrator, that's it. That's all we need to do. So now we can go into Cinema 4D or whatever 3D software of choice. And I'm using Cinema 4D. I have a project already saved. We're going to start off with our project settings. Hit Control D on your keyboard and choose your frame rate. My client prefers that I work in 30 frames per second, so I will just set that. I generally like using 24. Make sure you determine what the project specs are early. So now what we can do is we can go to our object manager in the top right hand corner and go to file merge objects. And we're going to find that Adobe Illustrator file that we just saved. I'll load that up and we can just keep these settings default. One of the things that I have noticed about a lot of clients working with Adobe Illustrator is that they make things very, very small. So we'll scale this up in just a second. But what I really like about Cinema 4D's Adobe Illustrator tools is we can go to the hierarchy button with our AI file selected. We can actually find all of the splines and paths that are in the Adobe Illustrator file. So I have a little bit of a cheater workaround working non-destructively. So here's how that works. What I'm gonna do is hit Control F on my keyboard and pull up my search bar. I'm gonna look up spline because I wanna take all these splines that exist in this project and duplicate them. So then what I can do is I can close that search. I can hold Alt and G on the Adobe Illustrator object and then we'll put it into a null and I'll call this old holder or something. Basically, I'm just trying to say this is a backup just in case I need it. So now I have all of these splines. And there's one downside about this workflow with Adobe Illustrator. Sometimes the splines have a weird axis center. So we're going to select all of them, hit shift C on the keyboard, and we'll type in axis center. And with the points center selected, we can just hit execute and very conveniently all of our splines end up having their axis center dead center. So now what I'm going to do is organize this just a little bit. So I know that all of these splines are the blood. So I'm going to hit shift C on my keyboard and go to the naming tool, not the axis center, the naming tool. And from here, I'm going to replace the name spline with blood. Replace name. And then the remaining splines, I'm going to do the same thing. Go to the naming tool, but instead of blood, it's going to be room. And I could also just name this by the letters, but 
I'm just going to keep the animation very simple for this tutorial, so that's fine for me. Next, what I'm going to do is hold select over the subdivision surface icon and then actually pull up an extrude object. So what I can do now is take all of these splines and put them in the extrude. Now the extrude is a little weird and it's extruding just one side. So instead what I want to do is I want to make sure I select hierarchical and that will extrude everything. Super convenient, right? So now I'm going to set this to like two, so it's not super thick. Maybe I'll set this to one. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now I do realize again that the text is very, very small relative to the Adobe Illustrator file that we were sent in. So I'm just going to double the size of it, maybe tr even triple the size of it. Three, three, three. Let's make it a little bit bigger so that when we have a camera, it will give it a little bit more character and life. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So now from here, what I need to do is I need to make sure that I match my reference from my client. So very conveniently, I can go to mode and then view settings and then back. Now I want to be in the front view. So from here, I'll hit F4 on the keyboard. And I realize that when you switch modes, it does change whichever window you have open. But we'll go back to the view settings. We can see in this little image section right here, I have a file. I have the logo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and match this to my reference image. Now, if you don't know how to add that, you can just select the little folder here and then find your reference image. Depending on how big the reference image that you have is, you might need to scale it up or scale it down, whatever else. I'm actually going to scale up to the size of my reference here. So let's just undo that and then let's just scale that up. Now I'm going to select all of the blood splines. I'm going to scale it up. Boop. And I'm going to just position them around where the reference is. It doesn't have to be super pixel perfect, but you want to get it as close as you can. All right, so that looks pretty good. Same thing with the rune. We can select all of these and scooch it over and hit T on the keyboard to scale up. We'll just keep scaling until it matches the size. And then we will just push this into place. Very cool. So now we have the type in the correct spot, but there's one thing that we're missing. We are missing the background plate. Now, unfortunately, the detail on the background plate is a lot more complex. And if there was time and scope for this project, we would model that plate, but a 2D plate, a 2D card actually worked out fine for this logo animation. So we're just going to use a simple plane to put that card on. So we'll load up a plane by holding click on the cube and then plane and we'll set the object orientation to negative Z. So now we can move it back and forth up and down. But first we need the image in our project. So we're going to go to a folder where the background plate without the text is on in the folder. And we'll drag this in, we'll hit no, because we don't want to save a copy and waste hard drive space. And we will name this material, we'll call this BG logo plate. We'll drag this onto our plane. And there's a problem. It looks weird and squashed and gross. So what we need to do is we need to go to our reference image, right click on it, properties and details, we can see that the resolution is 1920 by 1080. So we need to make sure that the size of our plane matches that for the aspect ratio, and then we'll scale it down. So we'll go to our plane, the width 1920, the height by 1080. And if we scroll out by holding two and then dragging on the viewport, we can see that the aspect ratio matches, but the size does not. So what we'll do is we will zoom in and then we'll hit T and scale it down. And we're going to go back to that reference image that we had. So we'll hit F4 on the keyboard and we will 
then hit T and scale it down until it matches. Now, I'm a little bummed because it's kind of hard to see. And the reason why is we're getting a lot of extra visibility of the rest of the plane. So what we have to do is go to that material editor for the background plate. And of the color, we're gonna go to the texture, go to the drop down menu, and you're gonna go to copy shader. Next, what we're gonna do is click on the alpha, we're going to enable it, and then we'll go to the texture, drop down, and paste shader. Now, if I look at my viewport, I can see very clearly that my background plate is more visible and I can see the reference image behind it. So I'm gonna move this into the center position as close as I can and I'm going to scale up until it matches. Very cool. Now we can obviously see that the background plate is not where it needs to be. So we will scooch this back and then we need to add the final finishing touches to make this look a little bit more fantastical. So most fantasy titles will have some sort of bevel cap. So we'll go to the extrude of our type and then we'll go to the caps. Now from here, very conveniently, there's a bunch of presets that we can use. We'll load up the flat angled preset and that is the best starting point that we could have to do our fantasy title. We already get that nice beveled chiseled edge of the fantasy type and uh, that looks pretty cool. Now we are not going to be rendering this in Cinema 4D so we're not going to be doing any materials on the text here. However, we're going to make a new material and we're just going to drop this onto the extrude and we'll call this type text placeholder. We just need something that we can replace when we move over to Unreal Engine. So from here, we have our text and we have our background plate. Now, if you're doing any other logo, you would follow the same principles. You would extrude your type, whatever else. Now we can move on to the logo animation. Depending on what you're doing for the logo animation, it could be a simple camera pullback or it could be a big sweeping camera move, or it even could be some really cool looking text animation. We're not gonna do anything too crazy here. That's a whole separate beast of a tutorial. So we're gonna do a camera pullback. So I'm gonna go into my camera and just add a camera. I will click on the little crosshair here and make sure I'm looking through my camera. And I love working with a very wide camera for logo type but make sure you ask your client because a wider camera will give you a different perspective and perhaps some distortion. So if we type 16, it's really looking wide and epic. We could also just split the difference and do 24. That looks pretty cool still. Now I'm gonna go into my camera and go into my coordinates and I'm gonna zero out the X, I'm gonna zero out the Y and then keep the Z the same zero out the rotation on all angles. Now I'm realizing that my logo is not quite centered, but my camera is dead center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my extrude and my plane and hit Alt G on my keyboard. And from here, I'm gonna center that up. That still doesn't look center, so we can first call this null logo stuff. Now let's hit Shift C axis center and make sure we have points center selected include children use all objects execute and then very conveniently that logo should be centered there and i'd say that looks pretty good a good way to check that is you can go to your camera and then go to your composition and check on the grid and for some reason my camera liked to punch in on the z we'll just pull that back and yeah, that looks pretty centered. Very cool. Now, for some reason, oh, it's because I had my axis center up. Uh, so let's pull that back one more time. Cool. Now we need to do some logo animation. So I want this to be a 10 second 
spot or a 10 second logo animation. So if I'm working in 30 frames per second, I can do 30 times 10. We end up with 300 frames. So I'm gonna go to frame zero. I like working in auto key, so I will hit the A button right here. And then I'm going to make a keyframe on the camera. And then I'm gonna pull up my dope sheet and I'm gonna take this keyframe and drag it to the 20 frame mark, maybe the 30 frame mark, because I know that's about a second. And then I'm going to go to my camera and push the Z value to be more positive. So now what the animation looks like is this. Bam. Not bad, but I wish it looked a little bit more cinematic. And the way we're gonna do that is a gratuitous camera dolly backwards very, very slowly. So we're gonna go to the end of our timeline, the end of our dope sheet, and we're gonna hit Shift G on the keyboard. And we will just pull this back just a little bit. Subtlety is key, right there. Sure, that looks fine. So now if we play this animation back, that looks pretty sweet. Now, because I am really excited about logo animation, I'm actually gonna go to that first keyframe and just crank this value down and that's just going to make it feel a little bit more intense at the beginning and then i'm going to select the second keyframe and hit a and that will make sure that it has a nice sort of curve as it rests into that final position so to play that back one more time that looks super cool so we're at the point in which i can bring this into unreal engine First thing I have to do is hit Control D on my keyboard, make sure that my frame rate is exactly where I want it to be, and then go to my Cineware options here. I want to check everything, and then I'm going to save my project. And once that's done, you are done working with Cinema 4D, and we can jump over to Unreal Engine. All right, I hope you learned something in this video. I realized as I was editing it that this video would be many hours long if I did not cut it off here. So I hope you learned something about Cinema 4D and Adobe Illustrator for a 3D trailer title workflow that would be finished in After Effects. In the next one, we'll be talking about Unreal Engine 5. Hit that like button. It lets me know that I'm making content that is valuable to you and the algorithm. Hit that subscribe button to join the party and learn more about Unreal Engine, motion graphics things, After Effects stuff from me. And I will leave you with one final tip, and that is to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and you'll make some... Goodbye, my friends. Bye!